Hello. Yeah. On this same topic, I had an experience I want to talk to you about and understand vibrationally. I was at an Astros game a year ago, and I was in this receptive place, very easy place. I had these great seats high up, great vantage of the field. And I found myself really bored with the game. And one of my favorite players was walking up and I says, okay, Stringer wants to just hit it. He's going to hit it. Where does he want to hit it? And then I found myself asking, well, where does the ball want to go? And I promise you, it's like this, I felt an excitement at a certain place in the field. And I felt the trajectory of the ball getting there. And he gets up there and hits it right, you know, in that same area. Not precisely, but it's there, right? And the next guy gets up, first baseman, and I said, okay, well, where does the ball want to go? And I felt it go, this excitement about a particular trajectory, left field, high rainbow trajectory. And it did exactly that. Third guy gets up, where does the ball want to go? And I felt the same kind of trajectory over where Stringer had hit it, but just a little bit off. It went right there. Fourth guy gets up. And I felt this kind of, around the home plate, this circumference, almost like a bowl. And it reached out to about halfway between home plate and the pitcher. And beyond that, no excitement, nothing. And even with the bowl, it just felt kind of like, Ugh, disappointment and he struck out and when I would sit and think about it I was like wow this was kind of fun I don't know what went on here but I uh, even talking to baseball guy about it in Asheville last year and he had a take on it that was a little bit different but valid but I still when you think about what we've been talking about here we explained to you that there is a vortex mm -hmm. and that there is a gestation within the vortex. In other words, all of the intentions are there and law of attraction has been acting upon it. So there is a vibrational reality before there is a see it, hear it, smell it, taste it, touch it reality. So is it logical to you that the intentions and beliefs, that the desires and the beliefs of collective consciousness, and in this case, let's call it the collective consciousness of those who are in the stadium who are playing the game or even broaden it to in the stadium who are observing the game is it logical that there is an inevitability about what is to be based upon not an absoluteness but a probability about what is about to be based upon the energy as it has lined up so far and isn't it logical that you would have a sense of that Esther knows that she is a Spurs fan from San Antonio and she feels often what's going to happen in terms of the outcome of the game before it even begins and sometimes she just can't speak what she knows mm -hmm. yep. because it's the way the energy is lining up it doesn't mean that it can't change but what we're talking about here is the momentum of thought now anyone could suddenly become for whatever reason in other words there could be someone who is participating in that game who is not bored or complacent about it, who is really eager and interested about it, who has something happen in the game that causes them to make a stronger statement to themselves of determination, a sort of definiteness of purpose that is taking place in that way, that could change the momentum enough to change the outcome. But so often, what this conversation is really about is about existing momentum and what probable outcomes are. So question we're contributing collectively to this outcome right? you are so but most people who are in the stadium are not focused upon what they want they're more aware of what they don't want they're more pushing against what they don't want than they are advocating what they do want so there's a sort of mixed bag of energy that sort of washes out most stadiums most fans most sports there's about an equal equivalent because even if the stadium is only full of the people who are supporting this team let's say it's a home game of some kind so the stadium is full of people that are supporting that even those people have more split energy than not because they're pushing against the other team as much as they are advocating for their own team. 
So that's sort of a wash, you see. That's why we say one who's in alignment with the stream or with source is more influential than millions who are not. It's a rare person who consistently finds the mastery of alignment and can effectively, productively, and decidedly and deliberately change outcomes. Because most people are so involved in observing what is that they don't have much power in change, you see. So that's what Esther was describing to you a bit as she was welcoming you here today, explaining to you that this gathering has sort of gathered before you gathered there is a probability of what will happen here in other words it's possible that through this discussion someone could get very clear about something they want and that the direction of the conversation could morph into something more specific to that but what we really want to talk about when we're talking about deliberate creation you see it's not so much about getting in there and with your action changing something because your action changes very little because your action doesn't have much power so many people are not being deliberate about mastery of their thought and mastery of their vibration and mastery of their point of attraction and then they spend a lot of time and energy and effort trying to compensate for it through action and that action just doesn't really change very much so what we want you to understand is that the way you become masterful and therefore in control of your own outcomes is that you have to get out ahead of it not a reaction to things that are happening but in times when you are feeling good get out there ahead of it and that is in essence what happened to you you said I'm a little bored with this game you didn't have any real dog in the fight you were not animated about what you wanted you were more or less in that state of reception so that you were able to read the outcome even before it happened well we're not so interested in you reading the outcomes of things but we are interested in you controlling the outcome of your own experience and so we've been describing it like this so contrast causes you to ask and ask and ask for your preferences and those preferences are a real thing and your inner being is standing there as the focuser and the holder and the point of attraction er of that which you have become that which you've become vibrationally that you may not have allowed in terms of physical so now that vibration that is becoming more and more and more let's call it momentum and then an idea occurs to you that's what we're calling the receptive mode when you for whatever reason maybe you meditated maybe you had a massage maybe you were enjoying something beautiful maybe you just woke up in a good mood and didn't do anything to kill the good mood yet so you're in the receptive mode and this idea occurs to you that's momentum well the more often you are in that good mood the more often you have meditated the more often you have allowed that the more often you allow yourself to be in the receptive mode then the more momentum and eventually there's enough momentum that it's going to become a manifestation and nothing can stop it so focus with us for just a moment on what that receptive mode is are you following us or is this boring the receptive mode it really matters the receptive mode well, you can also be in a receptive mode more like this. You can have been struggling. You can have been overwhelmed. You can be mad at someone. In other words, you're always in a receptive mode because you're always broadcasting. And what you're broadcasting is what sets what your receptive mode is. So the question is, am I in a receptive mode? Am I high and happy and exhilarated and passionate? Am I feeling love? Am I feeling appreciation? Am I in love with life? Am I tuned in, tapped in, turned on? Is that my receptive mode? Or am I ornery? Am I angry? Am I disappointed? Is that my receptive mode? So what you begin to notice since thoughts turn to things is that if this is your receptive mode, then the stuff that is turning into things from that receptive mode is not very pleasant stuff. You don't get a parking place and people aren't very nice to you and you forget about things that you want to remember and you stub your toe on things and, 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 and. But if you're in this kind of receptive mode, then you are rendezvousing with uplifting experiences and ideas are coming to you and your timing is good and you find yourself in the right place at the right time. There's a flow in either case. One feels really, really good. The other feels sort of not so good. So 
what we are talking about is there is a momentum there's a momentum that you've got going on there's a momentum that that player has going on there's a momentum that the crowd has going on and the more specific it is to you the more power there is in your momentum so we're not too interested in you wanting to control any outcomes but we do think that it is a value for you to recognize that when you are tuning into this higher energy that you do have the ability to anticipate where things are going you can just feel where things are going and everything has a trajectory that's why this conversation is so thrilling to us to have this discussion everything already has a trajectory and there's a trajectory that comes from here and there's a trajectory that comes from here there's a really high flying trajectory and there's a not so high flying trajectory and when you get so that you are aware of how you feel you can anticipate outcomes in as literal a way as you did in that game yeah helpful you understand it so haven't you known it don't you see people who are complaining all the time and you can see the trajectory of where things are going for them and it's not just because you remember where they've been it's not just because they've taught you that that's how they live their life it's because you can feel right now how they're living their life and you can't get very involved and you can't change those outcomes and we want to say to you lovingly and we want to get your attention with it most of the physical beings who you are aware of most of them certainly not all of them because there are exceptions to this exceptions that abound but most of politics is right here <laughs> it's this feeling and it's this outcome most things are about that they don't have to be you could be up here and having these high-flying experiences but most people because they are mostly about action and because most people don't know or have not spend any time mastering control of their own focus and therefore of their own broadcast and therefore of their own point of traction on that point yes two things first i was curious one way i was making sense of the baseball game was that my vibration i was in such a place of allowing that tapping into non-physical source which is timeless and therefore that time kind of collapsed that notion of time and I could see a little bit into the future not that I'm really that into the woo woo part of it I'm just really trying to understand if you will the physics if you will of what happened well here's the thing in the same way that you can learn to read and so you can pick up any book in the library and read it but there are some books that are better for you to read than others and so yes when you become sensitive to energy and able to read energy then that's good information for you to have we wouldn't spend too much time trying to predict outcomes of anything instead we would care about the way we feel right. we would care about the way we feel and we would care about our alignment because what you put in your vortex will predict your outcome right right what you've been asking for is coming about right. to the degree that you allow it to come about I saw this as kind of an indication it, it was a lesson and, and I've used it as kind of a template for kind of contemplating other things and it was fun it was light but got me really curious about you know where my thoughts were where my allowing was well since we've been talking about the receptive mode in the way that we've presented to you here today Esther's been thinking about it a lot too because over the years we've been saying to you that there are two ways to know what your vibrational output is or what your point of attraction is one is by the way you feel and the other is by how it turns out and both are viable means of understanding what you've got going on vibrationally you might say well it's a little better to know in advance so that I can do something about it before it turns out because after it turns out then there's more to observe and it's more difficult maybe to change it into something more wanted if it turned out in a way that you don't want it but it is so helpful in this becoming a master of flowing vibration on purpose to understand the correlation between what you were thinking and how it felt and how it turned out so since we've been talking about you're always in some sort of receptive mode the question is are you receiving guidance from your inner being 
or are you receiving guidance from the stream of mass consciousness that is worried about something because there's non-physical energy flowing all over the place what are you tapping into have you been feeling what is your receptive mode really about